वेलकम बैक एवरी वन टू माई मेसी डेस्क आई गेस बट टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट समथिंग इट्स अ डी आई वाई वी टी वन हंड्रेड टर्मिनल एंड दी आइडिया इज टू क्रिएट प्रिटी मच अ डम इश टर्मिनल दैट यू कैन जस्ट एड योर यू एस बी टू यू आर्ट अडाप्टर्स टू और योर जस्ट योर यू एस बी पोर्ट टू टू Uh, to you, you are a uh, micro USB port on another dev board, and this sits here just displaying whatever comes on the UART port, and that was kind of the idea for this video. Uh, I have no idea how well it's going to go, but I'm just hoping for the best here. So the idea is to use a screen like this. Uh, I have another unit of the exact same screen. This one's broken, so I've just been using this to measure things out. uh place it somewhere here so this is actually a 7 inch screen frame uh but i don't have a 7 inch screen right now and this is kind of out of a old portable tv uh it was a lcd color tv but it was a few years old not like very old uh but fit that in there uh cover it up with some kind of a cloth or paper or something i tried cutting out these pieces of acrylic but they end up being so rough edged that i uh did not decide on using them um adding a very low power uh linux board so i am talking extremely low power uh you would have seen the v3s lichi pi 0 in my previous videos uh now this thing consumes so little power that you cannot even see it on like a dongle the power charger adapter kind of a dongle uh doesn't register at all it only registers uh, registers if you have a screen with it um and we do have a screen with it today so we'll see how we can uh, work with that so before we go ahead with plugging everything in and the idea is to like use this assembly as the display and then uh, attach it somehow uh on this portable keyboard or uh, is like a tablet keyboard a uh, thing here tablet goes here instead of a tablet uh, we'll add this uh, and we'll cut this out or do something but for now uh, let's test this uh, out with a usb uh, hub because i want to connect all the usb ports to different uart ports and make it work so uh, we will need uh, to test this out i haven't Uh, although we have one OTG port on this board, there is another USB port broken out. No idea if that's going to work properly. Ah, uh, if it comes to the worst uh, case scenario, or uh, I'll have to uh, cut a micro USB cable, add that in there, and uh, do uh, some kind of a ghetto solution. But first, we will need to um, solder everything else together, including the power. So we we'll just do a. Uh, Uh, electric um kind of a sanity check uh, make sure everything else works and uh, yeah let's get started so this is actually the display that is working fine so i'll keep it separately so i don't drop it or anything and uh, you can keep this one somewhere else clear this out so it's a pretty thick assembly and again this whole thing is just kind of a um beta or alpha revision i'm not planning on using this assembly the final bit would be will be 3d printed uh and to get started i will wear my like safety gloves because i've been burned by a uh, soldering iron before and we are also going to use hot glue in a while and to power it i'm just going to use an external usb uh power bank micro usb one and uh, the reason being uh i have some 18650s that i can put inside the case but uh, i'm i'm not sure how uh, those will fit in although there seems to be more than enough space so maybe in the next revision we can put some uh lipo cells in there but for now uh, we'll just use the external usb to power everything up
any time now and there we go so it actually it boots up that's fine it says hub uh, detected with four usb ports good um now let me add the keyboard and i'll just add the keyboard to the otg port because that's the keyboard is like micro usb so and add a usb drive to it but first i can log in as root for which it isn't taking any keyboard input so our first problem on our hand might be that the hub or this port disables this port out put that in still nothing either the keyboard is broken or the port is disabled uh, while using the uh, the other external port uh, again that's the kind of the thing I wasn't sure about so just for testing I can still connect this to the onboard hub uh, but uh, just for testing I will actually just pop in um, a wireless keyboard Alright, I've got the keyboard dongle with me now and I'll plug it into the top top port detects the keyboard I can log in as root and there you go and I can do a D message and it will show me uh, my USB keyboard plugged in my hub and all of the good stuff so either this might be broken or uh, I am kind of out of luck and uh, that port doesn't work one way to find out it's to use a micro USB to a adapter plug that in and if the keyboard is not detected then well the port gets disabled and nothing so yeah uh, using the onboard port seems to make the micro USB port get disabled so I have some more work on my end and that is to cut uh, this cable and solder it directly over there the problem with that is I don't know where or what the color code for the cable is and um, and it might just not be color coded at all might just be like thin copper wires or enameled wires and that's kind of problematic for me um, but we'll work around uh, I think we should start with fixing everything in all right so I ended up completely um, removing the keyboard from its cover and as I expected uh, the micro USB cable was in fact connected via enamel wires and which is not good for us because um, uh, that means I cannot reuse that because it's weirdly color coded so I want to run my own cables and what I'll do desolder that um, remove everything and to make my life easier I'll remove the main board uh, or the logic board here from the keyboard and uh, the, or the actual key matrix uh, and I guess uh, reinsert that one once I'm done now it took a lot of effort to get this out so I'm not sure how many keys work and by effort I mean force so it was quite a forceful removal uh, I didn't end up breaking but I had to cut the whole uh, hinge in half uh, and I was planning to do that already so that's fine I guess but uh, I, I, I had hoped I might not get into it but uh, here I am so I'll move the other things over there bring it here that's the uh, that's the little 
logic board and I can remove that with this and I'll make sure of the orientation there's actually only just one way it can go in but there you go that's your keyboard put it aside and see this is how it's threaded through here we don't want that or actually we do want that but anywho wear some gloves and do some desoldering and soldering again now I'll just leave few long wires uh, dangling about so I'll have to go and get four wires and that's okay so luckily for us it's all labeled uh, VCC D minus uh, D plus and ground so that's okay there Booting all right, nothing shorted out. I can see everything come up. And can I just do root R O O T and enter? And that seems to work. And D message D with the M E S G. And there you go. So the keyboard works now which I am very happy about right shut everything down and plug everything uh, in its place remove the display this is the last time we'll need it uh, what all I'm going to do is to port the connections with hot glue I doubt I am ever going to change them and when there's a revision 2 of this uh, of this thing it will probably use completely different hardware uh, at least I'm hoping it would so I will be back in a bit so here it is uh, kind of and um, the yeah I'm just kind of afraid for the LCD it's, it's going to break at some point but uh, since we have a 7 inch model planned uh, it's fine let's try to power it on I guess um, And yeah, it comes to life. You can see U boot. Wait for it to completely boot up. Takes a few seconds. And I can go in as a root. There we go. And open up anything. Let's see how much power it draws. So I'll have the charger doctor plugged in. Turn it off. Plug this in. And there I hope everyone can see the charger doctor clearly. Um let's power it on. So it's taking about 1416.1416 amps, 140, 100, averaging about 150 uh, milliamps. So it is not much. It kind of jumps uh, once it boots into Linux and then again settles down to um, 160 milliamps. 
there's a bright LED glowing if I turn that off, I lose a few couple. Um, but apart from that, that's kind of the performance I was looking at. And with a 613, 650, even like a 400 amp hour when I can go for four hours or like a bit less but um yeah it's working pretty good uh I think the software right now is pretty bare bones I haven't add, added any like picocom or minicom and actual uart uh, and ttl uh, applications I don't even know if there's screen installed so I'll add that um, on a later date, I'll do like a software update um, on, on YouTube and show it off. So more or less serve this as a part one because I still have to assemble this. I don't know how I'm going to do that and I'm kind of burned for the moment. Um, still have to see uh, like add the cover and stuff like that. So yeah, it's kind of working and i'm happy it is so yep thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one